Myri, we just uh, stepped out of your uh, awesome performance on the stage in this uh, World Cleanup Day conference. Let's do it well conference. Uh, you're an expert on circular economy. Can you give us a few examples that everybody who's watching this video should absolutely know about? few examples or I could also tell like what everybody who is watching should do <laughs> themselves to contribute to circular economy. So we'll I think that. we get to that. So you want my example still? <laughs> your your okay. stage, your stage, Tallinn. <laughs> okay, so I think that um, the examples, again, very simple things that yeah. if you know any type of a place in your local community where you can repair something. You can repair your shoes, your watch, your electronics, clothes. Even that your is tables perfect. and uh, exactly. chairs. That is the example of uh, circular economy. I don't mm -hmm. even need to say names of any companies because for mm -hmm. sure there are like these little places, these like uh, old yeah. uh, people. Okay, little don't workshops. Wanna be, yeah, like these little <laughs> workshops that uh, mm -hmm. where there's this still the know-how of how to repair and uh, maybe we can even broaden it to let's say our dads and granddads mm -hmm. who are all like little circular economy experts by not throwing use, uh, usable stuff away but uh, repairing it exactly so in a way circular economy as a concept like the, yeah. these principles it's not like brand new like never thought about repairing <laughs> yeah. anything but it's kind of you know like bringing back mm. the the value of like actually if i have this like dress that I actually like it so much that I'm gonna uh, wash it properly, I'm gonna take care of it, I'm gonna repair, you know, like all these uh, principles are yeah. the things that circular economy is uh, looking for. But I think what's the main difference in, in, uh, in let's say, the discussions or the, on the global scale now is that we need business to, to yeah. join this journey so they will make us these products that are repairable, that are refurbishable, mm. that are actually maintainable, that they don't break down in the first uh, mm. use. And there must be good examples. <laughs> uh, so I would say that uh, one company that I really uh, am a fan of um, in uh, Estonia, there's a company called Foxway. And what they do is that they uh, uh, kind of um, collect uh, used uh, small electronics from mm -hmm. the Baltics and from the Nordics, and then they refurbish them. So they take, you know, like three different iPhones to make one working mm -hmm. iPhone and then they put it back to the to the market yeah. and these type of uh, solutions are crucial and i mean they are in that sense amazing they have hundreds of people working in that in their factory um, because iPhones are not necessarily made to be repairable or any exactly. type of electronics so in a way that they are they have been able to build a business yes. model around it and value um, like create value in those old products mm -hmm. is uh, really great another good uh, aspect uh, of uh, foxway is in that sense that uh, they take everything they can use and what they can't use they recycle properly or uh, handle properly afterwards. Yes, exactly. Because that's also one of the things that um, we don't have in this collective consciousness or awareness now how many different metals there are in electronics and how it's much more re like cheaper and uh, reasonable to actually uh, take those materials from existing yeah. products rather than going to mine them mm. uh, new and uh, virgin. Mm. In, and in a sense, it's uh, companies like this are also impacting uh, the bigger like telecom companies because uh, it's also like when average phone of a use of a phone is like two years, then I know Estonian biggest telecompanies, they want to change it to three or mm -hmm. in the end at four. Mm -hmm. Is that a trend? Uh, I would say that that's, uh, I believe that consumers are taking more responsibility also from for mm -hmm. their uh, personal electronics uh, uh, because uh, just recently I was talking to uh, like 100 high schoolers and they said on average they used their smartphone four years and mm -hmm. I was mind blown because <laughs> the average statistic mm -hmm. says that people change it over two years mm -hmm. but even uh, four years is not enough because if we take the environmental impact of making a smartphone then we should be 
using it for 25 years to actually kind Ooh. of neutralize the environmental <laughs> impact. So like, I'm not saying we should use a smartphone for four years, yeah. uh, 25 years, mm. but we should definitely build systems that make sure that mm. no, no usable material from that smartphone ends up somewhere yeah. wrong. But okay, um, electronics is one aspect. What about clothing? I know there will be a l huge change in 2025 when European Union is going to have new laws on uh, how, to, uh, how to deal with uh, mm -hmm. old clothes. Mm -hmm. So that's a challenge. So um, there are, I think, thousands of people looking uh, for ways how to better, like how to improve the recycling process, how to uh, uh, recycle mixed uh, textiles. textiles with polyester and uh, cotton uh, mixed. Um, so that is actually something that I do not have an answer currently yeah. because this is still in the works. Mm -hmm. A lot of universities are uh, looking for ways of what can we do out of these old mm -hmm. clothes. The best thing to do from circular economy point of view on an individual level is still take like have clothes only in your closet that you truly love, that you truly want to wear, and then wear them literally until the end of life. So then they, okay, maybe they are going to go to, at this very moment, to landfill. Yeah. Uh, but you have worn them so, so many times that it's not that... Uh, you just put it into uh, uh, for some sale yeah. and then you think that oh I'm such a nice person somebody bought my old dress but it's still creating yeah. the consumption so the more we love the things we actually own and the more we want to repair them and use them the, the better for from the circular economy and the environmental point of view you when you when you had your speech you gave a very awesome example about a very clever idea how to uh, how to reuse uh, textiles, not as clothes. Mm -hmm. Please share. Yeah, so um, there is a really cool new startup uh, in Estonia called Low Impact, and they have um, found a way how actually old textiles can be converted into a box uh, or like whatever packaging uh, material. So currently they have them uh, as a box shape, and uh, they just uh, recently launched an e-commerce uh, reusable packaging system called uh, Tango here in Estonia where you order um, something online and then instead of a cardboard box or bubble wrap it's yeah. gonna come in this reusable packaging that then you return you get your top seat back and it can mm -hmm. go into the circulation for uh, up to 20 mm -hmm. times at this uh, moment. So it's uh, like a deposit system that we are all used to when it comes to let's say plastic bottles. Mm -hmm. Exactly and I think that this type of deposit systems, like I would love to see these uh, systems expanding to mm -hmm. um, to things in supermarkets. Um, to uh, why can't I buy like cheese in a reusable uh, package, mm -hmm. for example? Or also I go buy uh, shoes and sneakers, and and why do we have to have so much cardboard? Mm -hmm. Like yes, on one hand we have find, found ways how to reuse cardboard and we can recycle it and all yeah. that, but at the same time we're still using mm -hmm. it for one time. And that's the thing also, the circular economy, um, with, from that point of view, you try to design out one-time things and you yeah. try to make things actually reusable as many times as possible. Well, you know a lot about this topic. How do you feel when we will be at this point where you get to buy cheese in a reusable uh, packaging? When it's natural, when like single use is over? Mm. Well, I tend to be very optimistic person <laughs> that by is nature needed when it comes to environment. Yes. <laughs> um, I would want to say that uh, perhaps in like seven years or so, I know like we are having a lot of expectation towards, you know, like 2035 or yes, 2040 and 50, and 50, 50. you know, like that mm. we're, we're kind of thinking that all these things happen then. Uh, but this is the time by what we have have to, to already, already live achieve that those goals. Yeah. So all these little steps have to be taken mm. uh, now. <laughs> so I'm hoping that in the next 
um, let's say next five to seven years, mm -hmm. we're going to be seeing like an explosion of this type of um, mm -hmm. solutions in uh, in different markets, like not only in Estonia, but uh, globally um, in different European countries, uh, in uh, South American countries, uh, in Asia, etc. So, but it does require the citizens to be open to this solution, support the, them in the early stages. And also it requires a little bit of regulation or or at least, you know, the state and regulators um, funding uh, these initiatives, being brave to decide that, okay, we're actually facing out of single use things. For example, we're, we're going to invest into repair places mm -hmm. and all these things. So it's, it's still a collective effort. We can't pinpoint out one culprit. We can't pinpoint out uh, only one responsible uh, body, but it has to come as a collective effort mm -hmm. still. And uh, collective is made out of little tiny little people like you and me and yes. uh, you watching this. What are the main uh, tips for us? What can we do to quicken the process? Um, I think um, first of all, from uh, from like home life side, everybody sort your bio waste separately. I think that's the main thing. Yes. Our soils are dying. Uh, yeah. Let's try to at least give our best uh, in that regard. Um, and then I think, uh, like, I think what really the world needs is to slow down. Because the more we slow down our life, the more, then you have a moment to actually pick up your sock with a hole in it and repair it. And then you have a moment to sit down and think, maybe I do my whole week shopping from the local market. Um, then you have time to kind of plan out. And the more you plan out, the less you are rushed into this mindless consumption of like take away coffee and take away food and all this. And then you have time to kind of appreciate what you have and realize I really like the things that I have and I want them to uh, to be in my life for many years to come. So slowing down life, down life and <laughs> living stress free, I think uh, that's what I would um, uh, like think that people should take as a goal for themselves. Thank you so much for your time and this awesome input.